Hi, the next day as you can tell. <laughs> I'm gonna go look for more survivors, guys. All good. Okay. Cool. I'll be right back when I can. Okay, see ya. See ya. Okay, see ya. Get in. Connect. Press play. Hmm. Next. 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 <sighs> Next. Yeah, buddy. A bun for die. Help me, help, I'm stuck in the truck car. That sound like my crazy ex. What is it? Oh, hi. Go, let's go, let's go. Jack? Yeah, it's me, your ex. Now come on. We have to go.
Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Got it. Push play. Can't I save you? You owe me a favor. Fine, I'll fuck you. Good. Social. My safe place, don't worry. Okay. Disconnect. Both saw it, and we both screamed in unison. 
I told my dad, and he said that when he feels like something bad is about to happen, he's usually right, and I shouldn't deny that feeling. Two years later, I walked past the hallway entrance. My name is Kyrie. Hi. Right in my ear. Loud and clear. I shrieked and I sprinted to my mom. Kadam. And asked her if the TV was... How old you are, Kyrie? She said no. She was right. Daddy, a few months ago, I walked into the Daddy living room and saw my mum's old. recliner was empty. And I remember thinking, wow, my mum must have went to bed already. You got that she one, didn't even tell Daddy. Me. The next morning, my mum asked me if she talked to me you after she left the bed. I told her no, sure. and I remember thinking it was odd that she didn't even say goodnight. Cool. She said she woke up after falling asleep in the recliner and saying, I'm going to bed. And she heard a voice behind her that didn't exactly sound like me say, Oh, we're going to bed. She also said our next door neighbor had something in the house, but didn't elaborate and didn't give me a time frame or anything. When she told me this, I already asked another well, about this. Like weird stuff going on around Highway Shit. Chris is a Christian, raised through and through. He's not one of those forceful Bible bashers. Our global warming is caused by Russian submarines detonating bombs under the Arctic ice to aliens and alien abduction. Alternatively, I'm an atheist, and don't go for any of that nonsense. No matter how many ancient alien documentaries okay. or Bible passages if you are a as proof of his case, if you're one of the fuck, although I am a fan of the ghosts, boys. because I've seen them ever since I was a child. I dare you. If nothing happens, nothing happens. Big rule. We've been good friends but if something does happen, years. something Due does happen. That we respect each other's I dare you. But I bet you won't. <laughs> Get out of hand to the point I bet him deep down, he's afraid. The night that this happened, played out just this like he's skeptic. He had he's an atheist. Time playing music deep down, he's afraid of the truth. And scolding one of his the truth. Bingo, for knocking down some of the World War II model planes that he builds for a hobby. It was around 10.30pm, which according to Chris was to late. And he decided to call it a night. He was awoken maybe an hour later to hearing scratching sounds at his bedroom door. So thinking it was one of his cats, he goes to open it, expecting one of his furry companions to come sauntering in. There was no one. Thinking nothing much of it, he closed the door and went back to bed. And just as he was throwing the doona over at himself, he heard the scratching again. Getting up again, the scratching stopped as soon as he opened the door. Being a little annoyed, he stepped out into the hallway and flicked on the light, wondering if it were his cats playing in the hallway and that they ran off when they heard the door opening. But the hallway was empty. He checked the bathroom, thinking they may be hiding there, but found it empty. He looked in the kitchen and saw nothing there either. Chris, confused, but too tired to give it any more thought, went back to bed. But Sit left down. the door open a crack so that he wouldn't have to get up again in order for his cats to just let themselves in. He was falling asleep again, and then he felt the mattress near his feet sag, as though someone was sitting on it. Figuring it was one of his cats, he said goodnight to his little furry sleeping companion before he could drift off to sleep. That's when he felt his hair being stroked of the night sleeping in the tub. Chris called me the next afternoon to confirm our plans over the weekend. I'd first thought when he told me about the events of the previous night, with nervousness in his voice, that he sounded like he wasn't sure if it had really happened or not, or had just had a bad dream, and his brain hadn't processed that he was awake. Chris was just starting to describe what the woman looked like to me over the phone. When I stopped him and suddenly asked, did she look like an older lady with short black hair, kind of slightly old and hunched over? He was genuinely surprised, 
exclaiming in an almost unbelievable voice, Yes, how did you know that? I've seen her at your house numerous times now, but I've never said anything to you because I didn't want to scare you. There was a long silence on his end of the line, like he was trying to process what I just revealed to him. Chris's voice finally came back, shaking and asked me, Are you serious? It was now that I wanted to say that it was just a joke, because I know how nervous Chris can get when it comes to talk of ghosts and anything that doesn't conform to his beliefs. But I decided to just be honest with him. I figured it would be easier for him to accept his first ghostly encounter instead of lying to him. I told him yes, that I'd seen her on occasions while I was over at his house, but I told him that she wasn't a bad spirit and that I didn't get any ill vibes from her whenever I saw her or felt she meant harm. Not surprisingly, this didn't make Chris feel any better, and he kept bombarding me with questions like what she was doing there, how long she had been around, and what she wanted. And I told him that she just probably enjoyed being in the house that she used to live in when she was alive, and keep watching over it. I told him that I didn't really feel like she was going to go poltergeist in the house, and that she was just curious about her new roommate, and not to worry about her. But Chris, being opposed to all things supernatural, and believing anything like ghosts go against the Bible, didn't believe me, and said he would have a talk with his minister from his local church to see about getting his house blessed. I assured him it wasn't necessary, but I could see his point of view on such a thing. I mean, after not believing in ghosts all his life, only to be confronted by one would be the same as me being an atheist, suddenly having the existence of God proven to me. See? So Chris and his church like I said, he's a fine. Like I said, end, most people who don't believe in ghosts are fine of the truth. I visited Chris's house a week after the blessing, where after some time of hanging out and having him show me his latest model airplane, did he ask me, do you know if that old woman's still Next here? Two with the two I shook my head and said, no, <laughs> can't see her anymore, nice. even though she was standing in the doorway between the hallway and the lounge room. I figured there's no sense making the poor guy worry over something he cannot control. This is a true account of what happened to me, somewhere between 1992 to 1994. I was roughly that guy is a pussy. and I'm female. My house was unbelievable. As soon as he found out, not you know. only by several spirits, but also a poltergeist that I had seemingly created completely unaware due to my teenage past and my sensitivity abilities. I need to give you a quick layout from the part of the house. So if you were looking at my house from my garden, the living room and dining room were on the ground floor. And on the second floor, my bedroom was on the right-hand side of the house. My parents' bedroom on the left. In between us was a box room with a window with no opening and had a tall chest of drawers which contained clean bedding and towels. The box room was a strange room. It was always God damn you it's got My house was cold all year round. Yeah, it's got Even bigger, in summer, baby. still cold. I know. The atmosphere in there felt thick and just really weird. It was a school night because my parents had gone to bed early, as they both had work. But I'm pretty sure it was the summer holidays, because I knew I wasn't in school the next day. So I stayed up to watch TV with my 20-year-old sister as she was staying over on the couch. The reason she wouldn't sleep in the guest bedroom was because it was the most haunted room in the house. I've known this because it used to be my bedroom until my other sister moved out. And then I had her much bigger bedroom, which was at the front of the house as I described previously. Three, so two, I I went to bed around one. One. And I switched my TV on and Action. With only four channels, and one of them being Welsh, it was easy to fall asleep, and I couldn't actually sleep unless my TV was on anyway. Previously, when it had been switched off, I had seen a lot of shadows on the black screen. 
and even my dog had been reflected in him. And though he was on my bed with me, when he wasn't even in my bedroom, very creepy. Just when I started to get sleepy, all hell broke loose. The house shook really hard. I thought it was an earthquake. The banging was so loud and hard. I remember sitting up in bed, in shock, reassuring myself it was just a mild earthquake. But after a few minutes, it got worse, and I realized that the noise was coming from the box room. I thought it was my sister looking for bedding. So I shouted, Shut up, Joe, you're going to wake Mum and Dad. And I listened out for a reply, and there was none. And my sister is definitely the type to reply. I then thought there's no possible way it could have been her, because I doubt she could even create that level of noise if she tried. It had escalated to pure pandemonium. That's the only way I can describe it. The ceiling was being banged on. The walls, the floors, and the house were shaking. I then thought perhaps my dad was snoring too loud, and my mum is looking for bedding to use in the guest bedroom while in a bad mood. I guess I wished it was her, and not something otherworldly. I was seriously petrified that I felt sick and was trembling. So many ghostly things happened to me in that house. But was this really another occurrence? I was used to having things thrown at me, or my stereo turning on full blast in the middle of the night. Not to mention other stuff. But this? I manned up got out of bed, and was scared stiff. But I opened my bedroom door to the pitch-black landing. I have a huge phobia of the dark thanks to this house. So just being in the dark gave me chills to the bone, because deep down, I knew what it was. At that exact time as I opened my door, my mum was coming out of her bedroom, which was opposite mine. With the box room between us. Then my sister turned on the landing light and came halfway up the stairs so that she could see my mum and I. Almost as though we had all done it in synchronicity. I had chills all over and I was so scared. In the pit of my stomach I had butterflies and not the good kind. My mum and I stood staring at each other and it was as though time stood still. We were in a state of confusion, because we were all accounted for. And to quote my mum, Your dad's in bed, asleep. And Joe, you're on the stairs. So Emma, if you and me are right here, then who the hell is in there? While we stood outside the box room, the pandemonium was still going on. However, as my mum said the, who the hell is in there part, it stopped absolute silence. We all looked at each other, then almost on cue. The box room door handle started to turn really slowly. We all fled back to our respective beds. I locked my door, got under my covers, and was so terrified. If it could create that type of noise, to me it was pretty clear that it could harm us. Me, no doubt. I somehow fell asleep, and before I knew it, it was morning. After breakfast, my sister came into the kitchen but and asked born. if I'd been into the box room. I said, ha, huh, no chance, not on my own. She then suggested it could have been our cat, who liked to jump into the open drawers and sleep on our clothes. So for that reason, in every chest of drawers in the house, a drawer always has to be left half open due to her being trapped once. A cat? You actually think a cat could create that? I wasn't aware we had a life. So the two of us went up there. We knew the room would be smashed up. There was no way it couldn't have been. Being the eldest, Joe pulled the handle and opened the door. We were both gobsmacked. Everything was as it should be. It was tidy. And not Sorry, a thing was out of the place. We were both Don't in shock. Just a few hours earlier, it sounded like it was being smashed up. 
We looked at each other in confusion. This leads can't get to it another occurrence that happened. When I had the back bedroom arrived at the box room and spoke, it was the exact same thing in the study, which was directly under my bedroom. Pandemonium and chaos stood in the middle of the night. Except I was the only one that could hear it. It went on for a good 20 minutes, but to me it felt much longer. I started crying. Every occurrence, except a few, was to affect me, scare me, hurt me. I was at my wit's end. Nobody believed it was a poltergeist. I got the blame because this time, the room had been trashed, pages ripped out of valuable books. My parents were fuming, and they grounded me over it. I really don't care if people believe me or not. I know it's true. And I know what I went through the whole time that I lived there. This story happened to me in 2015. I was outside one pleasant night, and all was calm. I was looking to the sky, admiring the stars to see how many constellations I could identify. If I'm being true to myself, the only constellation I've ever been able to find is the Big Dipper. And I have been told the Little Dipper is supposed to be exactly next to it. But alas, I've never found it. My eyesight is, however, not what it used to be. I was getting tired and getting ready to go back inside my house when I saw something that made me stop dead in my tracks. Looking straight ahead of me in the distance, Coming out of the woods was what looked like two very bright eyes that were waist high off the ground. I didn't know what the hell it was, but it scared the crap out of me. These lights looked a lot like floating lanterns or balls of light and were hovering. I've always had a bad feeling around that spot at night, but this was the first time anything actually happened. I ran back inside my house and ended up staying awake for an extra few hours, trying to think of a reasonable explanation for what the hell had just occurred. I know numerous years earlier, a friend of mine and I were building a fort in the same area of the woods when we came across a stone with what looked like an ancient marking on it. We left it where it was, but thinking on it, I couldn't help but wonder if what we saw was linked to that stone. I told my dad about what had happened and asked if anything had ever happened near that spot, to which he told me nothing that he ever knew of. I never ended up looking into it and still think about it to this day. I never saw those lights again. And sometimes I wonder if it was all in my head. Nevertheless, it was scary. This second incident happened in 2015. I met a girl online, and things were hitting off fast. Her name was Madeline. Anyway, within a week, Madeline travelled all the way from Ohio to Maine, where I lived, and we planned to move in together back in her home state, Ohio. Anyway, we crashed at my house for the night and left at 11 a.m. the next morning. I said goodbye to my parents and we were off. Fast forward 15 and a half hours later and we were in Ohio and we were settled. We went to sleep for a few more hours then spent the day together playing video games and having a good time. Madeline introduced me to her best friend Kelsey and her fiancé Steve. Steve and I became really fast friends, despite him being 25 at the time and me 19. This is where the scary part of the story comes in. Madeline and Kelsey started telling me about this abandoned train depot a few blocks away from the apartment where we were staying and suggested that we go check it out at night. Steve wanted no part of it, so he stayed at the apartment. M called one of her other friends, Paul, and he agreed to meet up with us. Later that night at around eight, Madeline, Kelsey and I 
set off to meet up with Paul. We met up about a block away from the train depot and then set off for the rest of the main attraction. Right before we got there, Paul chickened out and turned around and went back, while the rest of us just laughed at him. We walked through the concrete lot, over the building and up a small set of wooden stairs, and everything was fine, at least for a few minutes. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Kelsey starts to get me. Being as young as I was, my parents had baby gates at the top one. and bottom of the stairs. I was still sitting in a high chair at this age. Now the story begins. We were all eating dinner downstairs. The baby gates were all up, and I was secure in my high chair. My dad was watching the news, and my mum was feeding me. My dad had my mum look at the TV for the reports for less than a minute. They were distracted from me, and couldn't see me. Out of nowhere, they heard the dryer start upstairs. It was only the three of us living there, and only the three of us were home. My mum and dad looked at my high chair. I wasn't there. They ended up being quite confused as to what was going on, and my mum decided to go upstairs and turn the dryer off. Well, she decided to open it for some odd reason, and I was in the dryer. Now, if you know anything about dryers, you know that you have to push a button for it to start, and it's quite difficult to close the door by yourself. I was in the dryer with the door closed, and it was going, which is almost impossible with only one person. Also, I know it seems weird, but I was about seven months old. But I remember a few things from that day which my parents didn't know. At that age and at that place, I would always play with an adult who wasn't real. He had been dead for years, and that's what he used to tell me. My parents say that when I was staring off at nothing, there was a dark shadow there, and I would talk in some odd language. And it wasn't like how babies talk. It was different. The day that the incident happened... I remember him taking me upstairs, but I don't remember anything after that. It was rather creepy, and wasn't uh, very normal. To to I guess I should explain to you a few features of him. He had mostly grey eyes. He had a full head of jet black hair. There were times when he had a weapon of some kind. But those times were only when my parents fought. He had kind of treated me as if I were his own. Looking back on it now, I guess he was just trying to bring me closer to him, so that I could be his own. But my mum was smarter, and felt as if something was off in the house. But I swear I still see him to this day. Even though we've moved to a different house in a different city, and a different state. I have another story that's a bit more recent. It was my 14th birthday, and I had friends to sleep over. My mum had decided to leave six teenagers alone in the bad part of town while she went to the casino. We ended up leaving my room and went down the hallway to the living room. We'd heard a door shut outside. We all thought my mum came home early. But when they had me look outside, I saw a dark figure. It looked human, but at the same time it didn't. I told my friends and none of them believed me. So I had one of my friends get up and look outside as well. She screamed and told the others that I wasn't messing about and that it was the truth. Then all but two of them started screaming at once. I told them to be quiet and to stay away from the windows. Mind you, in my neighborhood, it is believed to be a skinwalker lady that lives very nearby. That's... What I started to think fit the description. They kept freaking out, and then by the time my mum got home, we all screamed. She doesn't know what happened the night of my party, and I hope she doesn't find out any time soon.
This happened about seven years ago. I was 16 years old at the time and was home alone with only my younger sister Nadine, who was nine at the time. Our only parent was my mum. She worked a full graveyard shift from 10 to 7, and we had easily become accustomed to it, because we would usually be asleep or at school when she was working. Every night was the same. Get home from school. Homework, shower, say bye to mum, and sleep. Often me and my sister would stay up late despite my mum's orders, but nothing crazy ever happened. We lived in an upstairs two bedroom apartment. At night, me and Nadine would barricade ourselves in our mother's room, lock the door, and sleep. We were always too scared to sleep in separate rooms. Our mother had the key to every door in the apartment. This specific night, me and Nadine were in the no, living room watching yet another Staying family around. episode. It was getting up the door. She began to cry, and I tried to console her but was too scared. I waited a few months in hopes that they would go away or my mum would call and yell at us to open the door. Two you? minutes passed oh, and my mum called us back. She saw that we called her oh, and took a break as soon as she could call us back. I told her about the knocking, and she urged us not to exaggerate. Whoever it was was gone now, and we were okay. She blamed it on perhaps a lone drunk or someone Small. looking for Can trouble, you drop me off? but regardless to not open the door, told us to go to bed. I At the fucking... It had been about an hour since the first knocking. When suddenly it started up again. Nadine and I shot up. The knocking was now at our bedroom door, and there were no lights. At the cafe the down the road? Sure. Thank you. You're welcome, Mom. You're welcome, Sally. And you're she answered on the phone. You know what I mean. Thank you. You're welcome. I was in tears, <laughs> beyond scared. Nadine had hidden. While my mum was on the phone, they pounded on the door again, and I extended my arm out with the phone in hand so that she could hear. No the pounding was so intense, I felt at any moment how they would break the lock on our door and rush in. Shit. She called 911 and came home that night. When she reached the front door, both doors were locked. Okay. The officers searched the home okay. for any signs of entry. Which wasn't likely since we were on the upstairs level. Nothing was ever found. Nadine and I still talk about oh, this stuff sometimes. Kyle. Because if it hadn't have happened to both of us, I don't think either yeah. of us would have believed each other. You got them right. My family owns a country <coughs> house in rural Missouri that I grew up visiting pretty often. There were plenty of beds and rooms to sleep in, but I always stayed in a room in the basement, since it stayed nice and dark well into the day, and the bed in that one was by far the comfiest. Ever since I can remember, I always had a weird feeling when I went down there, but I was usually so tired from running around and doing farm work all day that I had no trouble falling asleep. So, it never really bothered me. Stuff started to really pick up around the time I was 12 or 13. The one thing that really sticks out was one night when I was drifting off to sleep. I kept seeing a human-sized shadow walk past my room. This room was at the end of a hallway, and I saw it slowly walk back and forth past my room about three times, almost like it was someone on patrol or something. I always kept the door slightly ajar, and the bright hallway light on because of the creepy vibes. Finally, I saw whoever it was nice stop in front of my door and wait there for three minutes before moving on. The part that really freaked me out and confused me was that the hallway boards are normally super creaky. Like even my little 12-year-old body would make these things pop and crack like crazy. So I knew whoever was walking in the hallway at night couldn't have actually had any weight on them. The other thing that happened that really freaked me out actually caused me to stop sleeping in that room again. I was laying in bed, 
At this time I had just woken up Ooh. and was laying with my feet hanging off the end of the bed. When clear as day, I feel a single okay. finger well, trace a line from the heel of my foot to the tip of my big toe. I even felt the damn fingernail at the tip of the finger. That same day, I went to my grandma and told her everything, and that I didn't want to stay in that room. And could she please make a bed up for me in an upstairs room? It was then it's the last that she told me the family secret. My great-grandpa built that house in the early 50s. But in order to do it, they dug up the grave of a Confederate soldier and moved his grave to a new spot 50 yards away. They had a priest bless the new spot and everything. But apparently that wasn't enough for the soldier. The adults in the family kept this from us kids so that we wouldn't get freaked out staying there. There was another time that I had been running.